Well, our audience is pretty um, uh, pretty familiar with um, depreciation, but not all of our audience, Rob. So we probably should go over if you could just give us the, you know, what qualifies for a two and a half percent capital works um, uh, allowance, and what would be um, a, a depreciating asset that's over a shorter effective life. Can you sort of highlight the difference between the two? Yeah. So anything that's really a, a structural uh, to the structure of the building is is capital in nature. So you know improvements, remodeling the kitchen, remodeling the bathroom, as I talked about before, carport, all those kind of things. Um, forty percent over two point five. Uh, so forty years at two point five percent. But what about an air conditioner? Let's go. Okay, we just put an air conditioner on the wall. That's we're not going to do that over forty years. I know. So that, that's that's where they're also capital in nature, like, but they're called depreciating. Um, they're called a capital allowances. Um, and so depreciating assets essentially have an effect of life. And so there's a lifespan that, say, the air conditioner is expected to last, and you can claim it over the period of the effect of life of that depreciating asset. Um, now, once again, the deduction may be limited to whether it's a, a new one or a first hand, depending on when you when you build when you purchase the building. Um, but we have some pretty comprehensive lists on the ATO website around all the di different depreciating assets um, in our rentals guide and the outlines kind of how long things, you know, are expected to last and how you can claim them. Um, and I think we'll probably add some of these, the list of the podcast to help, to help everyone. Uh, but a, a couple of things to remember. Um, normally you can only claim new depreciating assets. Um, if you buy an existing property, um, to rent, the assets are considered secondhand, um, along with any other assets that you might install um, that have been used elsewhere. So once again, a bit like initial repairs, it will depend on the time at which you you, you purchase the depreciating asset. Um, so for example, a, a new dishwasher in your home, and if you buy a new dishwasher and you put it in your home and you put the used one in your rental, you can't claim a deduction for, the, for your old dishwasher that you've bunged in the rental. Um, of course, if you buy a new property, um, the installed depreciating assets are also considered to be, to be new. So Ben, let's land that plane. So we've got a we've got a, a rental property. We just go and buy an air conditioner. Yep. Let's say the air conditioner costs us five thousand dollars. And what the ATO might say, and they've got an approved list that you can go and see all their details, but it'll say five thousand uh, bucks. We think it's going to last five years, um, and you might be able to depreciate that over. Let's say five, but it'll be six when we get to it. But five years, a thousand bucks each, because they're saying it's not all being used in the first year. So mm -hmm. therefore, we've got to we've got to sort of uh, uh, drag it across different tax years, right? Now, in effect, in the first year, you probably get a, a pro rata, and in the last year, you get a pro rata. So it'll go across six years. But that's that. So that's first of all, we can break up the cost and depreciate it over a number of tax years, and it becomes a non cash deduction which is a nice little bonus in tax return land where you actually get a deduction for something that you didn't have cash flow out that year. So that's one. Number two, let's say my investment property needs an air conditioner, Ben. Mm -hmm. um, but I've in my house, I've just uh, upgraded my air conditioner. So what I've done is I've taken the air conditioner off my wall and I've walked it over to my rental property and put that air conditioner up on the wall. Um, <laughs> what the ATO is saying, no, 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 that doesn't count. You cannot um, claim depreciation on that for your investment property because that's no longer new. And I think, uh, Ben, you'll know this better than me, but I think it was May 2017 where those rules actually changed. Rob, do you remember which year it was? When the... uh, uh, test, testing the memory right now, Ben. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it's, that's all right. But no, this is a good, this is good why I think this is the point. The rules can be quite complex, right? Um, yeah. there's, there can be different outcomes and it can be depend on the timing. So this is really important why, you know, have a look at the ATO website. Um, it was our, something our... like 7 p.m. of that night. Yes. You know, in, when the treasurer did the reading, you know, the public reading in parliament or the second reading. Yeah, that's right. If you, if you had found out about the first reading at two o'clock in the afternoon you know what would you have done i quickly need to buy this property <laughs> exactly and uh, our, our good friend uh brad beer who has a depreciation business in this country yes. i remember he, he said he choked on his steak when he uh, saw that so <laughs> anyway rob's not going to come on that so um i guess the the um there are some there are some changes yeah change of pace here yeah that um we should expect in January, uh, in fact, the 1st of January, Rob, um, that will affect not just some people, but every Australian selling property. Can you tell us what that is? 
Yeah, I, I can bet, uh, Bryce. And probably that's right. There are some changes, but probably one caveat, um, the legislation um, will actually make changes to, to the existing regime, which already impacts a number of Australian residents when selling. Um, look, the, the, the changes are before Parliament, um, which means that if they are passed, they'll, they'll impact all Australians. Um, so it's one to watch as it goes through Parliament. But these changes are to do with the foreign resident capital gain withholding regime or FRCGW, as we call it in the ATO, because saying foreign resident capital gain withholding regime starts to get a bit repetitive, um, which is a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> but it's a really important topic for Australian residents um, who are selling a property. So at the moment, under the current law, if you're an Australian resident for tax purposes, you must have a clearance certificate where you're selling your property and it's valued at $750,000 or more. And so a clearance document is a document that the ATO issues to prove that you're an Australian resident for tax purposes and you attain that document from us and you give it to the solicitor or the conveyancer as part of the settlement process. But without that certificate, you're treated as a foreign resident and at the moment, it's 12.5% must be withheld from the property sale price and it's paid to the ATO. So at the top of the at the bottom of the range of that at the current rule, $750,000, it means that you'd have $93,750 withheld and sent to the ATO, which can obviously severely impact your property transaction. But if you're using those funds to kind of, you know, buy a next house or something, that can obviously impact your future financing. Um, so the proposed changes to the regime that are before Parliament at the moment would remove the $750,000 threshold. Um, so if passed, that means that anyone selling a property in Australia will, that is an Australian resident will need to get one of these clearance certificates. Um, and the proposed changes also increase the withholding tax rate from 125 to 15%. As I said, still before Parliament. So we can't preempt any decisions, but it's important that if you're selling, that you check with your solicitor or your registered tax agent if these rules apply to you. You know, if you are looking to, to sell in January, there's no harm in getting a certificate for us even from us, even if you think you're going to be under the 750000 limit. Um, but, you know, please do be aware of, of these changes. So, so one assumes, Rob, that um, as part of obviously the selling process, you you prepare your contract of sale and all the relevant information as part of that. You normally would engage a solicitor or conveyancer to act on your behalf as part of that transaction. So I suspect it's just going to uh, be an additional part of you know where where I have to also present um, a title search, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's just going to you know uh, sort of blend in with the with the sale document. So, you know, we're, we find that people are kind of do, do, do use the conveyances as part of this process. Um, it depends on, you know, who they've engaged and how they're selling, depending on the state. But what we'd say is clearance certificates are free, right? And, and they last 12 months. So, um, and if you don't use them, there's no penalty or cost. It's, it's free to get one. Um, so don't wait until you sign the contract, you know, before applying for one. You can, you know, apply early and get one early, even if you're thinking about selling. It's one less thing you got to worry about when you're trying to, like, yeah. sell everything, pack the house, you know. like So, um, and it can take up to 28 days to process. Um, so make sure you do apply, you know, like people try and, you know, apply and go, oh, settlement's tomorrow. Um, so, you know, what we're saying is, you know, make sure if you think about selling, get one early. One less thing yeah. you got to worry about later on. Also, if the property's owned jointly, everyone on the title deed um, needs to get their own clearance certificate, um, as and these might have different process times. So, if yours arrives and your partner's doesn't, just be patient. It can be twenty eight days, um, but this is why we're saying get it early, and then you don't have to worry about it. Important. That'd suck. We'll go to settlement. One person's got it and the other person doesn't. They're holding them up. That'd be not ideal. But um, this, so if everyone follows the rules, Rob, um, it probably just means it only affects foreign residents, right? Because if everyone gets their sales certificate, you won't withhold anything. It's obviously gone up a little higher, but um, it'll only affect um, foreign residents and those who don't get clearance certificates. That's right, bro. So the current regime, even its current form, uh, it only, only affects foreign residents. But if you're an Australian resident um, and you don't get a clearance certificate in time, you might actually need to wait until you lodge your next tax return to get that money refunded. 
Um, so if you're thinking, you know, you're selling in October, you might have to wait to the following July. So this is why it's really important that people do apply early if they're thinking about selling the house, then they don't need to worry about this issue. And and sort of how do they go about doing that, Rob? It sounds like apply. Is it a form we download or is it a, a process we go through? Tell us a little bit about that sort of application process and where to find it. Yeah, Ben. So you can apply through your solicitor or your conveyance or your registered tax agent if they're if you're you know if you've engaged one of those to help you with with the sale of the property. But you can also go to our website ato.gov.au/slash clearance certificate um, and and that will that's the form that you need to fill in. And, and what we just say on that is actually just a, an important caveat for everyone. Why there is legislation going through Parliament, this is actually currently an existing regime. So yes. you know, just be mindful. You know. Um, if you're selling, say, you're selling a house, it's in a million bucks, you need to get one now. Um, it will just be that it will impact those that are selling a property under $750,000 under yep. the changes before Parliament. Good tip. Really good tip.